Good morning. I am the Reverend Dr. Lawrence E. Mosley Jr. And I am the pastor of Hope Missionary Baptist Church. I wanted to personally welcome you on today to the HMBC worship experience. So it is my prayer that you worship with us. So sit back and relax and enjoy the worship experience. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been shaking on my beer. Oh God, you've been better than I would be to myself. God, you've been so good. Has He been good to anybody in this room? Come on, let's raise up this worship to our Savior. Say, Lord, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. All over this room, declare. Say, God, you've been better. Because I owe you my life, Jesus. I owe you my life. Somebody say, even if I try, it's all because so good. Point to yourself and say to me, he's he's been better than good to me. Oh. Say, God, you've been so good. Somebody testify of his goodness today. You've been better. I owe you my life. You're the only reason I'm alive today, God. Lift those voices. So good to me. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. God, we give you glory. I don't know why you do it, God, but God knows I'm grateful. I, somebody tell him, I owe you my life. I can't pray. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't work. It's because so good. So good. Somebody lift your voice and say, Say, God, you've been better than good. So good to me. Now listen, we're getting ready to testify. I need somebody to raise your voice and say, So many doors. So many ways he's made. So many times you've healed me. Has he been good to anybody in here? So many doors, so many ways you made, so many times. Hey, you've been better than good to me. So You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. I don't know why you're doing, but I'm grateful. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. I should have lost my mind, but you kept me. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. Cause you've been so good. And you've been. So good. 
And when I wasn't good, you were still good. When I wasn't good, you were still good. Help me say that. Come on. When I wasn't good, tell me, you were still. I wish I had somebody that would tell the truth. Can somebody lift those hands and cry out? When I somebody lift those hands and cry out. When I wasn't good, say you were still good. When I wasn't good, you never turned your back on me. You never left me alone, but you held on to me. When I thought you should have let go of me, you held on to me. When I wasn't good, when I wasn't good, somebody praise him right there. When I wasn't good, you still love me, you still bless me. When I wasn't good, no. you were still good. Still good, you were still good when I wasn't good. When I wasn't good, oh, because you've been so good. Close your eyes, you see yourself before this king so. So good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. Okay. You've been better than good to me. I don't know why you do it, but I'm grateful. You've been better than good to me. Come on, somebody shout it. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come now as humbly as we know how, thanking you, Lord, for being a good God. We thank you for being a holy God, and we thank you for loving us in spite of ourselves. And on today, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, and we ask you to create in us a clean heart and to renew the right spirit within us. And we ask you, Lord, to speak to us from your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your unconditional love towards us. We ask you to be with us now. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever we pray, amen. Come with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 22, the 37th verse. And it simply reads as follows. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Also, I will be reading Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. And it reads, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. For a few moments on this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, great expectations, great expectations. 
The believer's requirement is to simply love the Lord. Love our neighbor. Go and make disciples of the lost. We are also required to encourage existing disciples. We are mandated to obey the Lord. And when new disciples come into the fold, we are to teach these new disciples, not by what we say so much, but by what we do. We must begin to grasp the concept that sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ does have some risks. But when we live in a world that is suffering, sharing the gospel and the good news of salvation is worth the risk. See, as we begin to move through the text, we must understand that it is a tragedy when believers act like they don't know God. It is a tragedy when those who claim to worship him in spirit and in truth act like they don't love God. It's a tragedy when we fail to show love to our brothers and our sisters. It's a shame when we refuse to take action on needs that we see in our community and in our churches. It's a tragedy when we don't share the gospel and it's shameful when the people of God refuse to live right, to love right, or to act right. It's a monumental tragedy when the church of Jesus Christ simply chooses not to be the church of Jesus Christ. Or today understand, it is not a badge of honor to claim to be in Christ and intentionally be contrary to the move of Christ. See, when we think of the goodness of God, we realize that we already have the power to overcome what is dwelling all around us. And we have this power by the aid of the Holy Spirit simply because we are in Christ. When we reflect on what he has brought us through, we realize we have the power to overcome and to get things done. When we think about the price that Jesus paid for us on Calvary, we realize we have the power to overcome and to get things done. When we think about how God has loved us in spite of ourselves, we realize we have the power to overcome and to get things done. When we think of all that God is, we have confidence in knowing that we have the power to overcome any situation that arises in our lives and we have the power to get things done in him. But see, the problem, see, and we do have a problem on today. Our problem is that society is selfish and comfortable. 
We are so comfortable that we don't even want to be inconvenienced in the church. But see, the plan of salvation tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the penalty for falling short of the glory of God is that we all must die. But see, if we haven't been redeemed, If we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if we walk by faith and not by sight, we already have the victory. However, even though we have the victory on today, many times we have misplaced priorities when we should have great expectations. We have great expectations because we are standing on the solid rock. We have great expectations because we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. So many times though, we get caught up in doing church and not being the church. But see, in the two texts that we read on this morning, we find the Lord giving us instructions because we have great expectations. In the sermon, it reveals the lifestyle Jesus wants his church to live. It is also a systematic approach to the work that we are called to do as believers. This process is laid out marvelous, marvelously, yet simply by our Lord and Savior. He simply tells us to love God unconditionally. He also informs us that we need to love one another without limits. When we go to share the gospel message to a dying world, we need to go in love. And as we serve, we serve in love for the glory of God. See, when teaching people to observe, we must teach and encourage all seekers of Jesus Christ to perceive God accurately. And that simply means that we need to know what we are talking about when we are teaching them to observe. We need to know God accurately for ourselves. The time is no longer where we can get our breakthrough from grandmama's testimony. We need to know Jesus for ourselves. And we need to guide people to a greater understanding of who God is. And once they know him for themselves. The word of God and the spirit of God will permeate their hearts. So that God's will can be done. We must teach as we disciple folks to pay close attention to God. Close attention to his will. Close attention to his way so we can live it out. See, the Lord is commissioning us to disciple others while we yet remain disciples as well. This mantle has been passed to us 
And now it is time for the real work to begin. This final commission commands us to love. It commands us to train. And it commands us to lead others to Jesus Christ. See, once we have tasted the goodness of God, once we have partaken of his majesty, we can't accept anything. We just can't live in the old type of way because we have great expectations on today. So what do we do when we conceptualize that we have great expectations? What do we do when we realize that God has work for us to do? Point number one, we must get up and go in love. To get up and go, this means we must arise from our places of comfort or recreation. Sometimes when we are called to get up and go, this may cause us discomfort, but in the midst of it all, we are called by God to get up to move and to engage in kingdom building. As we embark on this journey, we must remember that we will be starting new relationships and we will be restoring old relationships. The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. God is calling us as a church to start, to restart, and to restore. To get up and go, we must recognize that we are to get up and go in the joy of the Lord. We are to get up and go in the love of the Lord. We are to get up and we are to go in the peace of the Lord. We are to go boldly into the world with faith, hope, and love in Jesus Christ. As we get up and go, we must remember that we must seek to get along with our brothers and our sisters because we are commanded to love our God and to love one another. This ability to love one another anyhow shows our spiritual maturity in Christ. So when we get up and go, we are to be peacemakers in Christ. So we get up and we go in love, but not only must we get up and go in love we must serve diligently in love. See, as disciplers, we are called to make community out of chaos. We are not called to create more chaos in the midst of chaos. This also means that the work we do must be done 
in excellence. See, my brothers and my sisters, the time is over where we strive to work to be mediocre. We are striving for excellence in our God. We serve a God of excellence and we should be giving God excellence in our service. We must simply press to give God our best in everything that we do. And we do it not so we can get the glory. We do it so God can get the glory. So we get up and we go in love. Number two, we serve diligently in love. But last but not least, we seek to transform the world in love. See, we should be attempting to touch the lives of others with the love of God. We should be looking to enhance the life of others with the gifts from God. Never, ever, ever, ever allow history to keep you from sharing his story. See, in this life, we are charged to go into the world and not be of the world. We are charged to make new disciples. We are charged to encourage existing disciples. We are required to live a life that teaches other people how to live it out for his glory. So in order to share this new hope, we must realize that in Christ, we have hope. So whatever you do, do it for the glory of God and do it in love. If we are going to go, do it for the glory of God and do it in love. If we are going to make disciples of the lost on today, do it for the glory of God and do it in love. If we are going to be godly examples, do it for the glory of God and do it in love. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. Jesus states, if you do what I command, you are my friends. So in your going out and your coming in, strive to embrace his love and be his friend. In the times of adversity, strive to embrace his love and be his friend. In times of despair, strive to embrace his love and be his friend. In the times of joylessness, strive to embrace his love and be his friend. In times of desperation, embrace God's love and be his friend when bitterness won't let you go. Strive to embrace his love and be his friend. The songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So when harmful situations come in your life, pray about it. If there's conflict among you and your peers, pray about it. If there are distractions in your ministry, pray about it. If there are problems with your health, pray about it. If there are problems in your home, pray about it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. The songwriter goes on to say, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless 
pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. There are great expectations for you on today. So take it to the Lord in prayer. So what do we do? When we conceptualize that we have great expectations. Number one, we get up and go in love. Number two, we serve diligently in love. Number three, we strive to transform the world in love. So with that understood, let us be dedicated to love. Let us be committed to the work and let us be positioned to be an element of transformation in a dying world. See, I believe on today that the greater is in you. God has given you an extraordinary gift for times such as this. So tell yourself on today, I have great expectations and you have great expectations because we serve an almighty God that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And because he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We need to get up on today and we need to go in love. And as we go in love, we will serve diligently in that love as we strive to transform this dying world in the love of Jesus Christ. You have great expectations. Begin to walk in the greater, begin to walk in the newness of life because you are standing on the solid rock. Great expectations. David said in the book of Psalm that I almost fainted lest I live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but no matter what you're going through, can you help me just testify, tell somebody, it may not look good, but God will make it work for your good. <laughs> yeah, I've been fellas saying it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Everything going on in my life. Good. You heal the I'm only grateful that it's all God. Oh, it's all good. Everybody know it's all God.
know. If you know it's all God, that's a good place to give them a worship. Hey. Come on, stand to your feet and stretch out across the aisles. Join hands with somebody that didn't just come for a Mother's Day parade, but join hands with somebody that came to participate. Somebody that came to give God praise. Hey. Somebody that say, I ain't worried about what I was worried about when I came in here. Because I turned it over to Jesus. Yeah, you're gonna turn it over to Jesus. I believe I got some witnesses. Why are we walking out of there? Oh, you're still in there. Oh, you're still in there. Yeah, you know I walk through the valley. I was just anybody, but I'm not anybody. If I was just anybody, but I'm not anybody. You're looking at somebody that have went through hard trials and tribulation, but still I made it. If I was just anybody, but I'm not just anybody. I'm somebody that the Lord touched. If I was just anybody, but I'm not anybody. I'm somebody that the Lord filled with the Holy Ghost. And I can declare it's all. If I was just any man, if I was just anybody, but I'm not anybody, I'm somebody trying to tell everybody, I'm somebody who can save anybody. Let me ask you a question. It warms my heart that you all have chosen to worship with us on today. And we can't assume that everyone who has worshiped with us on today knows Christ and the pardon of their sins. So at this time, we extend Christ to you. And if you have received Christ on today, or if the worship experience has moved you on today, feel free to reach out to the church, or you can reach out to me on my personal email, pastorhmbc at gmail.com. Thank you for worshiping with us on today. Have a blessed day. Continue to remain safe and remember that God loves you and we love you. We are Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We are God's loving church. God bless you.